So I'm looking at the lawsuit right now, the Yuzu lawsuit. This is the NerdNest podcast, by the way, everybody. And I'm looking at the Yuzu lawsuit, and, and here's what it says. Users who have a lawful copy of an unmodified Nintendo Switch console, you know, uh, any unauthorized Nintendo video game ROM, a game file by itself not secured on a console or a cartridge, is an unlawful copy. Either a user unlawfully dumped it from a physical cartridge or digital eShop game on a hacked Nintendo Switch or the user obtained a pirated copy from the online pirate ROM library. So they are saying that if you rip your own games because you're breaking their uh, encryption, that is illegal. You don't have the right to back up your own stuff. Russ, what do you think about that, man? I think that is not a new concept from Nintendo. I've heard that quite a few times. You know, we heard it during the virtual console days and stuff like that as well. Basically, as soon as people realized that they could back up their stuff, especially when law like was uh, setting precedences to say, okay, you know, like the Napster thing, you can back up your own MP3s from a CD player. You know, like they, they had these kind of precedences already there where it's like if you own a CD and then you rip it using iTunes into an MP3 and then put it on your iPod. That is all totally kosher. And then Nintendo, like once people started putting that association with video games, like they're the people that were really kind of staunchly like, no, you can't do that. You only own like the license to play the game on our console in our terms, basically, or on our terms. It's, it's weird. And I think this is one of the points where they will probably not do well in terms of, uh, pushing this legally, but it's the other points that I think are way more salient in their like defense or in their, their prosecution in that they, uh, the whole idea of just bypassing the, the technology in the first place is what's wrong. Right. And so Rich has some good points about that actually. And so I, I kind of want to <laughs> kick it over to him because he always is so succinct in all of our like text conversations about this exact problem. So <laughs> I, I don't know if I can carry that over to, to voice, right? But but yeah, it seems like so that what we discussed in the Discord, right, was how they were phrasing everything as unlawful. And that like it's intentional, right? Like they are trying to set up that, like you said, even just circumventing having prod keys at all is unlawful. And if you have right. prod keys, that means that no matter what you do with it, it is therefore unlawful. So that's how they're sort of setting this up in terms of the like they even the precedences, like you said, that they have like Nintendo of America v. Gary Browser. All of that just relates to just hacking your switch. Right. So a lot of people are going to say um, you can play this. You could have played Tears of the Kingdom on a hack switch. Nintendo acknowledges that. And they're saying that their precedences acknowledge that and now make it so that using an emulator is unlawful because now you're decrypting using the prod keys that you would have gotten from a hacked switch. So they're, they're sort of acknowledging that it's, that it's at least just as bad and setting that up to be the reason why this too is unlawful, as they say. Um, I think a lot of like the color around tears of the kingdom specifically, like, a million copies were pirated. This right. much money was taken from Nintendo. I think that's just color, right? Like it's just putting some glitter on the lawsuit. But I think this is the crux of it. What do you think, Carrie? Uh, so it, it, I I uh, got Tears of the Kingdom in ways, but I also bought it. So whatever, you know, when they said that it was downloaded one million times, you got a minus one from that because I bought it. I also bought your <laughs> special edition. So uh, the pirated version that you're talking about does not equal a lost sale because... How did those... they even get that number, right? They just, uh, they're yeah. just estimating that number. You know, it's, you yeah. know, a lot of those times they can just look at like BitTorrent links and just say, how many people are connected? Uh, all these unique IPs were in this torrent. So this is the number that we have. Yeah. It could be larger than that. There's also like the statistics stuff where you can kind of evaluate so like statistics makes magic numbers. It's mm -hmm. like based on all of these parameters. Play. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But the, there's lots of things here that, Oh man, the precedent that it would set. It is, it is precarious. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the reason we're talking about this is because last week we opened up the show <laughs> by saying, boy, oh boy, emulation had a really good week. And that, that title and uh, that title of the episode 
just did not do well because <laughs> it was like I think it was the day that I posted the episode because we record these on Sundays <laughs> and I tend yep. to post them on Tuesday mornings. Uh, I, the day that we posted the episode, this news came out. So it like the idea if they win this lawsuit, that could really change how things are done in the em in the emulation space. You guys know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I also found interesting from the whole like coloring of the narrative is that they really made Yuzu out to be like the bad guys here, like that they are just targeting like these specific popular games and putting them out there early and stuff. But the Yuzu team among the Switch emulators, you know, between Ryu Jinx and Yuzu, Yuzu is the one that's actually more principled, I would say, in the sense that they put a specific stance out there, like we're not supporting anything until after release. And so even when Tears of the Kingdom came out, people were having to modify their yuzu installations in order to even get the game to work in the first place because the yuzu team would not touch it publicly until the actual day of release whereas ryujinx was like yeah here's a new update and you know more or less it actually was for tears of the kingdom you know and right. so so that's one of the things that's always been kind of odd to me about that the other thing that i found really interesting is the the kind of outcry from people in one in two specific ways one is that uh they're saying this is all happening because you were emulating on a current console if you just been wait you know just wait until the switch is no longer available for purchase like games and whatnot then you can start pirating or, or doing your emulation but even talking about it is what caused this to happen so there's a lot of blowback from people saying that this is what you get kind of thing <laughs> and the other thing that i saw a lot on reddit in particular were people saying this is good because now we have to go back into the shadows and so we we like it's bad for emulation as a whole but it's great for us in that we uh we have to go back to our little hidey hole because we got too 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 uppity basically yeah, too, too close you, to the sun you're right yeah the, so many good points there um on that one specifically like yeah do you think that's where it'll go that well actually before that let me just say some of this right like it does feel like with the steam deck with uh, uh yuzu going to android like it, it emulation has just become a lot more accessible in the last year or two and yeah is that to blame to some degree i think so you know i, I think a lot of it has to do with just the kind of demographic that this is attracting because there are i mean the, the honest truth is, is that piracy is happening for on yuzu and ryujinx to play switch games without buying them it's happening you know and i think that the demographic of doing that are often skewing younger and like less able to buy their games like for me i've got a oh, huge yeah. cartridge collection you know I, it's just one of the things that i can enjoy as an adult right yeah. but you see all these like I'm, I'm just gonna put a number on it but like a 14 year old jumping in there like how do i play this game or whatever and you yep. can just tell kind of from their writing or whatever that it's somebody very young um my my worry is that when things s slow down or things get quiet or whatever those folks who are generally less informed they don't have the long history of emulation they're the ones who are going to be asking the most about hey how do i get this thing happening and so it's going to blow up more where we're going to have this small age demographic just kind of jumping in and and putting it out there on reddit or whatever just throwing a bunch of stuff out there and it's going to make everyone look bad you know what i yeah. mean in the sense that mm -hmm. reddit's going to be filled with people asking for help and that's going to be you know <laughs> us old folks will be like stop asking you know what i mean but that's not going <laughs> to right, satisfy right, them right. right and so yeah yeah it's so Russ, weird. where do i get my roms again <laughs> <laughs> um, one of life's great mysteries there's yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing I want to talk about, the point that you brought up, Russ, and truth be told, I made a Twitter video that was like, I'm a big Nintendo fan, blah, 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 I hope Nintendo loses. That video I made after, because I was going to do like an 8-10 minute video where I was just like railing on Nintendo, and it got really, really ranty, and I was like, I'm mm. not going to make this video. This is just super negative, and I'm just going to, I don't want to hear the comments, so I'm just going to, I'll just make something that's a lot more positive. Like, look at me, like, I support Nintendo like crazy. And I still want them to lose this. So I went in that direction because I would rather be in positive. However, in that video that I was going to make, that was a video, I actually recorded it and just deleted it. The point that I made in that video, like you had said, was people are saying that we shouldn't be emulating current gen consoles. I said, this is Nintendo's fault. This is Nintendo's doing. No one said, hey, Nintendo, use old tablet parts and then l underclock it like crazy so that <laughs> a Steam Deck could emulate it. No one told Nintendo to do that. Nintendo made its own <laughs> choice to use low-powered hardware. That was something that Nintendo started doing after the GameCube. And then 
that's Nintendo's fault. If Nintendo is getting sour grapes because everything can emulate a low-powered device, tough cookies. Make better hardware. Like, you can. You could just use current-gen stuff and probably clock it a little bit higher. Uh, like, the next the Switch 2, the Super Switch 2, is already going to be using old parts again. So, is the is that is that our fault because it's going to be easier to emulate? Or is that Nintendo's fault for using old stuff? Well, I mean, uh, let's look at, like, the PlayStation, the Xbox. If it were easy, uh, I, if there were a way where you could use a computer to play those games... Uh, you know, specifically PS5 or Xbox Series, whatever games. Mm -hmm. Xbox probably not a good example because they're all on PC anyway. But right. um, like PS5 games, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which just came out, and I could right. play that on my PC. Like, would you say, well, I guess the PS5 should have been more powerful? Like, is is that the, the argument that you're making? You real like do you know there is a PS4 emulator that exists and it barely runs anything. And that's PS4. And it's PS4 is a bit more powerful than the Switch. And, and it's using and it's using a translation layer, isn't it? So it's, it's using not a even yeah. yeah. So think about that. Think about how emulation in itself. This is why when Xbox, the Xbox One was able to emulate the Xbox 360, it was magic. It was dark voodoo that they were doing. Because there's in no world <laughs> should AMD Atom cores be able to emulate the 360 when that came out. That is just pure wizardry that they did. And they go into detail on like how they actually vet all that stuff and what they're doing because they do next gen level emulation. But if you're talking about general emulation, typically what you're looking at is like an 8x difference. So you need eight times more performance to ho emulate the previous machine mm. effectively. And that's just if it's like straight. Like when you look at, like at Saturn, which has like a zillion coprocessors and trying to right. emulate all of those and then sequence them into something, you need like an outrageously fast CPU to do all that. So yeah, it, there's a reason why PS4 and P PS5 emulation don't exist is because you don't know when PC is powerful enough to emulate that. I would right, also argue... Sorry, Russ, just real mm -hmm. quick. The idea that, you, that you're saying, you know, it's because, like, the only reason this is happening is because the Switch is, is underpowered, and that justifies it. I, no, I don't I'm, necessarily agree with that. I will say I'm, not I, saying it, I, I, I'm all for backing up your games. Right. I'm not saying I'm it justifies for, it. Okay. I, it just, that's what it seemed like to me, because no. you're, you, okay, I got what you're saying. Russ, what were you going to say? So I was going to, I was kind of going to add to that in that they, Nintendo has created an environment that supports emulation or encourages emulation. You, you, you mentioned you, well, you know, PS4, PlayStation and Xbox, you know, say you wanted to play them on a computer and it's like, well, hold on. You can already play most of those games on a computer, right? And I can pay for them legitimately exactly. and, yeah. and enjoy them exactly how I want to. Yeah. I have the See, choice. That's a better Nintendo, argument to me. Right. And Nintendo doesn't give you that choice. They're saying specifically unmodded switch in yeah. our own terms and for as much as we can say. So, for example, if we want to play yep. Super Mario 35 or whatever that game is, you can't anymore because they took it down from the switch store. And so the only way to play that game is through emulation at this point. So they're creating yep. their own beast, not in the sense that it justifies any sort of illegal means if it is illegal to play these games, but they are creating the environment that starts to support that. And so that's why I think yeah. people are so divided on it. And I think what's worse about that specific point is that it's not just about the switch, right? Like they made, they made it very clear that they are also protecting their retro library, right? And when we talk about the PC, the fact that I bought a game and I bought it in 1997, I can still play that on my PC today. And that's just not held true for Nintendo. I hope that that changes for Super Switch, Switch 2, um, but clearly I cannot play my old Nintendo games on my new Nintendo console and they want to resell that to me. And they made it clear in that lawsuit, in the verbiage of that lawsuit that they want to resell it to me. And not only do they want to resell it to you, but they want you to subscribe to their service for yes. it where they then emulate it. Correct. They emulate <laughs> ROMs of Correct. their games, which is ridiculous to me. When when you were... I want to go ahead, Carrie. I said, when you were reading off in the beginning of this, when you were reading off the whole list of like what's allowed, Mm -hmm. It just was. It was like that SpongeBob episode. He's like, "Turn your hips around, down, <laughs> step on your right foot. Don't forget it." <laughs> like, it's like this long list of ways that it's like legal to emulate is uh is funny to me. Um, anyway, I was when you let it off. There's a point in that video where you can just see I start laughing just because it just starts washing over me. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> legalese. 
Oh and yeah, the thing is, legalese you know, is the worst. As us we, as old timers too, we like we remember the days of spending all that money on the Wii Virtual Console to play our Nintendo sixty four or NES games and whatnot, absolutely. right? Absolutely. And Nintendo's like, thanks for that time. You now have to rebuy that, or you have to <laughs> yeah, repay absolutely. for it, right? And so they they've already yeah they are pushing us into this spot where they're they're trying to take away our own ownership of these games, and it's terrible. I want to get back to the idea of you know people talking about you know we. The idea that it's bad to emulate current consoles, whether or not it has anything to do with power, is completely beside the point, in my opinion. There, Nintendo is saying it's illegal to back up your games. And if they win this lawsuit, then it will be illegal to back up the games that are on the Nintendo Switch and, of course, on any other system moving forward because it, it would be like precedent setting. And that means... Look, look, we got to be able to back up these games now before we can't back up these games. Because if you look at the Wii U library and the 3DS library, they had a lot of games that were not physical games. Like they were only available on the eShops. Those eShops are now gone. And there's you know, like Pirate piracy or emulation or whatever it is that you want to call it although i don't think that those two things are you know it do not equal sign in the middle there um right whatever you want to call it though that's the only way to preserve these games yeah yeah there, there's a there's a part here where like uh there is already legal precedent for uh uh like clean room reverse engineering uh, there is already precedent for that. There's legal standing for that to be legal. Uh, this is also like during when IBM was trying to sue all the DOS compatible machines, mm -hmm. uh, and they were making other DOS compatible stuff using uh, reverse engineered stuff. And the courts sided with the DOS compatibles, saying, "No, they, you know, they're not looking at your stuff. They did their own work to make it work." And the funny thing was that DOS compatible machines were better than do you know the IBM machines. But mm. that's you know, there's there's two parts there. So there's already legal precedent for uh, the reverse engineering emulation to kind of ride on those coattails. The part where it gets hairy is the things that you said is like uh, w the encapsulation of it, uh, the encrypted part of it that is getting right. broken and stuff. That is that new frontier because now it's no longer just the raw data that you're doing. You're circumventing the security part of it. Allegedly. And Allegedly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> allegedly, uh, that is the part that gets really dicey, right? And that's where everyone is doing that now. It's like no, no one's not doing that. So it's like, uh, if that precedent wins, everything that if if that was like the whole thing is like, oh, you can back it up, but is it encrypted? Like, ah, where's yeah. the spoon? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like that type of thing is like, if that was all that it takes. I hope that whatever court gets this, just like you know, is like no, yeah, this this is not gonna. You, you can't just like wrap a, wrap a thing around it and call it something different. So really, what is the difference though between this encryption? We're talking about prod keys and all that kind of stuff, and just BIOS files, right? It seems to me that it's kind of the same concept, right? PS one BIOS, PS two PS two BIOS. Those are required to play those games unless right. they have HLE BIOS, which is like high level emulation ones. And so, yeah, that's that's the worrying thing for me, too, is if they set this precedence and saying any decryption, right. circumvention kind of thing means that you can't do it, then we're out of luck when it comes to even something like Dolphin, you know, like that that, yep. that one has the IPL or the, the BIOS file like already kind of embedded in it. It decrypts it on its own, which is kind of how it got in hot water and got taken off steam and all that other kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it, it makes me worried that that's going to cause issues in other ways. Maybe Sony's like, hey, you know what? Let's come after like those PS2 guys mm -hmm. for some reason. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. Because then they could it's... resell the games on the PS5 under the PS Plus subscription thing. Yeah. Right. That'd I be do great think if they did. I do think it's going to entirely focus on that, right? Like the defense and the prosecution, I, I guess it's not really prosecution in this case, but you know what I mean? The plaintiff and the defendant will both be focusing on whether or not they are circumventing technological measures. So like the defense is going to argue, the defendant is going to argue that they just aren't right where we yeah. just re reverse engineered. We did the same thing they did just using our own because they didn't copy any of the source code that Nintendo had. They right. just did their own decryption yeah. uh, using the key. So that's going to be the argument. One thing to note here too, right? Like, because a lot of people have been saying that this is just Nintendo, um, 
I forget what the word is, but you know, just just trying to make Yuzu and uh, the people behind it run out of money, right? Uh, go bankrupt, uh, possibly. But I do feel like they think they can win this, right? Um, one good piece of news that wasn't in the show notes. I don't know if, if we're all aware, but they they do have a lawyer apparently. So it looks like yeah. they're going to fight that. So I'm I'm we're obviously all going to keep a keen eye on where this goes. Clearly. There's, well, do, there's I mean, part- we don't know if they're going to fight it. They got a lawyer. I mean, somebody's coming after you with a right. lawsuit. You get a lawyer so that the lawyer can advise you what to do, right? Fair. But we don't know mm-hmm. if they're going to be like, bring it, Nintendo, or if they're going to be like, um, let's settle out of court. Because it, one mm-hmm. of two things is going to happen. Well, one of, like, four things is going to happen. They go to court. Nintendo wins. Nightmare scenario. They go to right. court. Yeah nightmare uh uh nintendo loses there's rejoicing in the streets they yeah. don't go to court and they settle i guess it's one of three choices they don't go to court and they don't settle i think that's a happy middle ground to where like yuzu just said i mean I'm sorry for the people that work at yuzu but if they just say all right we're not going to fight this we're going to settle out of court and be done with this as long as it doesn't go to court and doesn't set precedent then that is a win for right. emulation but if it goes to court and nintendo wins very yeah. very bad yeah, which is terrible. why i feel like nintendo wouldn't bring the case if they didn't think that they could win because they would be very unhappy if it went the other way yeah um <clears throat> there's a there's a part here that i wanted to like if we talk about Christmas. There was a thing that you were talking about, Rich, that I wanted to to piggyback on. What were you What were you talking about just a second ago? Uh, so before they before I mentioned they had a lawyer, we were talking about. Uh... Oh, right. So I was going to mention this is a little funny uh, gag thing. This is the uh, you know crazy Carrie conspiracy theory. Carrie <laughs> is um, uh, be, again. This is like the the victim blaming type of mentality. Is uh, Nintendo makes weak mm. hardware, and the Super Switch Two is going to be weak hardware again. So they're going to have another situation where mm-hmm. emulation is going to rapidly catch up to emulate Super Switch Two. So this is also uh, conspiracy theory. Carrie saying uh, this is Nintendo getting ahead yes. of it and trying to stamp yeah. down any type of emulation for super switch is yeah, uh, uh, the conspiracy theory part of that to go in there. And, and you're you not know, alone, right? I saw a bunch of that. Go ahead, Russ. I was just going to say, you know, the, the whole paradigm is going to shift here very soon because we have flash mm-hmm. carts for the switch and that's going to change a lot of the tempo because once they, they, the, there's two components here. There's the, the cart that we've already seen in a couple of videos, like damn it, Jeff just made one where it, you basically put it, you know, a backup of your game file, you put it on an SD card, put it in this cartridge thing, put it in and you can then play it. But the other half of that, and it, it hasn't had any videos about it because I think they're still working on it is a cartridge dumper. So this will be a little USB dongle. You put your game in and it's going to dump all your files onto it. Then you take those files, put them on a SD card, put them in that cartridge, then put them in your switch. You've not modified your switch in any way at that point, but you have backed up and are playing a backup of your game. So the whole like circumventing of all that stuff, that's, I think there still is a, no, there's no prod keys even required for that as long as you're just playing it on the original hardware. So yeah, yeah, there's no like decryption or anything else happening other than whatever is happening in those cartridges. And so that's a whole nother paradigm shift. Yuzu isn't even required for any of that stuff. So what's, what's going to happen then? There's a part of me that wishes those, the MIG switch waited until the super switch came out and then when the mm-hmm. super switch came out they're like because there's, if all of us that have physical switch games the hope is that we could just use our switch cartridges that we already bought and put it into the super switch right right and if nintendo didn't know that there was any flash cart that was made the super switch would come out with the same right. switch cartridge and then the yeah. mix switch would come out and then they're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> instant flash cart for super switch too uh yeah so i i I have to wonder what nintendo's doing because now they know it's in their playbook and the super switch got delayed um you know (laughs) it's it's a delay that happened wink wink wonder what they're doing with the switch cartridge slot (laughs) Uh, (laughs) part of me thinks that they're just going to yank that slot right out of there go all digital and say if you have games that you bought digitally they're compatible with the super switch if you have physical games they're not and i think this plus the idea that big stores are no longer carrying physical media um i think those things add up to it being likely that it could be the end of physical media and 
For me, I don't care because I never use physical media if I can help it because it's just not very convenient. Um, that being said, I want physical media to exist for everybody else that it is important to. Right. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, another piece of emulation news that came out this uh, this week, <laughs> that, like on the same day, I think part of me thinks it was spurred on by this lawsuit, uh, almost like the lawsuit had a chilling effect, is the fact that uh, Russ went out and made a video all about the, uh, the, the emulation station desktop edition coming to the Amazon Android app. It became, thanks to, thanks to his video, the number one uh, app on that store. And then Amazon said, um, here, let me make sure I get this right. Uh, Amazon <laughs> has decided to remove emulation station desktop edition from their app store because the app facimulates facimulates. I'm sorry. That's not even <laughs> close to a word. The app facilitates emulating and pirating of games from third party sources without explicit authorization from those sources, which is all kinds of ridiculous by that logic by that argument yeah. uh, my windows machine like they should ban windows because my windows machine yep. can launch an emulator like there's right. nothing illegal in emulation station there is nothing there that it doesn't facilitate emulation it launches programs for you which are that's a Literally. ridiculous thing russ yeah, yeah. You you obviously had to put out a new video after that one. Uh, talk about your thoughts on this process. Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. It's an app launcher that just specifically launches emulation apps, you know, and so that's that's really the reality of it there. It's like saying uh, you can't use VLC media player, you know, like a video player because you could watch an illegal movie on the <laughs> VLC media player. You know what I mean? Like it just doesn't make any sense. And so I get it. And I do agree that I think that probably some of this came from the attention that was coming from the Nintendo Yuzu thing. I don't know. Like I, I felt like that plus the fact that it was number one in the app store got people to look at and go, what is this thing? And then without even understanding what it is, some boardroom happened or whatever. And, it, you know, I used to see it all the time in government work where people who are do not understand what's going on are the ones that are making the decision. Right. And so <laughs> that's kind of what I feel like is probably happening here is like someone's like, wow, you just said the word emulation. It's got the word emulation in it. You know, that's a bad thing. And so take it down. And so they did. And. It's all good. It pushed the publisher or the developer to put it on Patreon instead. And so that's not a perfect solution either, because that means that every time they have an update, you'll have to go and re-download it from Patreon and then install it and like kind of sideload it yourself. But it does open up the fact that you don't have to use the Amazon App Store to get the app anymore, which is a little bit convenient in that sense. So, yeah, it is what it is. And um, it, it's just so ironic. I mean, the fact that you can just get like the PlayStation portable emulator on the Amazon app store. You can buy the like drastic DS emulator <laughs> on the app store, but you can't use emulation station. The it thing that no actually sense. just launches it is just, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Well, what yeah. do you think about that, Rich? Yeah, I think it's insane. I don't even, I, it's literally a launcher, right? So like, there are there other launchers, like not emulation related launchers but are there other sorts of launchers on android because like sure. there's plenty on windows right yeah so, like, like atv pro is a good one where it, it's just it makes like you can choose which apps that are going to show it makes it very like android tv friendly like, yeah you have these big it's tabs just front ends. Tab on. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's just like that and it just feels like uh, like you said they didn't know what they were doing when, when they did it they just saw a red flag and i think the fact that it went number one probably even more so than than the fact that nintendo uh issued their lawsuit that day. I think the fact that it made number one was just, it was scary to enough folks. And here's the thing too. Like I saw um, a tweet after the Nintendo thing that like, Oh, valve and meta should really like help Yuzu and fund Yuzu. And I'm, and the thing is, I don't think they're very interested in that, right? Like meta specifically, they have no interest as far as I yeah. can tell in protecting. That's, That's what we Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Warren right? Buffett should, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it's like a really random thing to say. <laughs> like, yeah. Valve has yeah. this reputation for being yes. a good guy uh, in yeah. the industry, especially by by a lot of people who watch this show. Um, for sure, uh, you always hear about good guy Valve, and th like they make a lot of decisions that a lot of people, a lot of consumers, are happy with because. Yeah. 
I think in my opinion, Valve looks at the long term and says, okay, sure, we could make a quick buck by doing A, but if we yep. don't do that, we'll probably end up making more money in the long term. And yep. I'm not saying that they're bad, um, no. but they're not like companies aren't your friends. They they just yeah. right. you, people people get this weird mentality when it comes to any company xbox playstation nintendo valve and they start to think of them as like oh these are my buddies and so then mm -hmm. they defend them anytime anything like that happens so for the people that are like valve should bankroll the yuzu lawsuit or you know whoever <laughs> else right. bankrolls the the user like what would be in it for them there's right. like nothing that they would get yeah. out of it you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah. and in Nintendo is, you know, filing that lawsuit. I know going back to Nintendo, right? But they were filing that lawsuit on behalf of Nintendo, but also the third parties that sell games on their store, like Valve, right? So, and and Valve has shown that uh, with Dolphin coming to Steam, that they they want to be friends with Nintendo and not make an enemy of them. Yeah, you know, this is one of my worries about the whole thing is that Nintendo. From, from a gamer's perspective, I think most people are in the know that Nintendo can be a-holes, right? Like, they, they do things mm -hmm. in their own interest. You, and You never go full uh, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get screwed often by Nintendo. But I'm sorry. To I, the I, I couldn't hear what you were saying, Russ. Could you back up, like, 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, just the idea that Nintendo among gamers has kind of a bad reputation, you know, and just being consumer unfriendly. However, if you just take grandma, you know, she thinks, oh, the guys that make Mario, they make these cute, fun, like family friendly, like they're a wholesome company. You know, they make these quirky little things that I remember from the 80s and whatever. I, I worry that like the judge on the bench of this mm -hmm. lawsuit Right. is going to be a grandma and not a gamer, right? <laughs> and so it's, they're going to be like, how dare Yuzu come after Nintendo, this wholesome company who's just trying to get it so that people can play games, right? Yep. So I'm just, I'm worried about that aspect and that they have cultivated this image for themselves that makes them so nice and wholesome looking among the non-gamers that that's who's going to be setting this legal precedence. And so we're going to get to this point where gamers are going to get screwed it's just true. because we're the ones in the know. Yeah, it's, to it's At totally a thing. As mm -hmm. the only grandparent on this podcast, I just want to <laughs> let everybody know that I'm I'm offended for all of you. Okay, so there you go, well, uh, Carrie. I cut you off. What were you saying, man? No, it's uh, Russ is right. There's a part of that that I like. It's often my periphery. Like I, I I recognize that it's there, but I never fully appreciate it. And it's always been the thing, especially when I was growing up, because I would be always so hyper focused on gaming and all the other things in there is like super plugged in like you know 2005 and 2006 when i was looking at the stock market i was like i'm gonna invest in nvidia i'm gonna invest in amd and amd was like two dollars a share nvd was five dollars a share i'm like why are these companies like valueless like why does no one like nvidia is like the king of the crap they make the best gpus they just year after year mm -hmm. like how is this company only five dollars and it's like that same thing that i'm just like reminded of like it takes we're starting to see more of that shift because I want, as we've grown up, other people that also grew up and know that NVIDIA is bigger, you see all this other stuff just like taking off more so to AI, but there's uh, AMD is taking off and, and AMD took off before AI happened, right? So that was what, yep. like $70 $7 a share, $100 a share. Um, so there's like that part of catching up. But it's also like what Bob Iger said from Disney. He's like, they just invent, uh, invested $1.5 in Epic. And they had an interview with him. Like, he's like, you know, I, I recognize that my nieces and nephews, they're, they're on iPads and they're just playing games all the time. And it's like, you just noticed that now, dude? Like, <laughs> <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> like, yeah. That, so there's, yeah, there's that worry that I get blindsided because I do have, you know, uh, shades on because I'm just hyper plugged in. So things that are happening immediately, I get the news of, and I am instantly aware of it. And I'll talk to people about it that I think should be like adjacent to where I am and they'll be completely oblivious to it. So there's like that, that part of not being fully cognizant of what's going on. And as Russ says, that is a worry that I don't really think about all that often, but I, I, I recognize I should. Yeah, yeah so the people who make the decisions, just like Russ said, the people who make the decisions are often the uninformed, and right. they're going to have to have a lawyer bring in an expert witness to explain what encryption is, and then you're you're depending on the people who are being having explained this to, um, yep. not right. like 
you know, when Carrie well, starts throwing up a bar graph and my eyes glaze over as somebody <laughs> yeah. as somebody posted on Twitter, um, you know, <laughs> that you got to hope that that doesn't happen in the jury pool if this is a jury thing or a, or a judge thing. You got to hope that right. that doesn't happen because if it does, the people just aren't going to understand. Like, it's hard to explain this stuff to a layman. I think what right. you have to, I think like one good thing would be like, if you like, you're like, this is, this is a Hershey bar and it's wrapper. This is what the rapper is what Nintendo is saying is that they shouldn't be doing. But when it gets to Yuzu, it's already unwrapped. Whoever unwrapped it, that <laughs> wasn't Yuzu. It just happened to be unwrapped by the time it got there. So what you're talking about is not on Yuzu. Settled. Isn't it isn't it unwrapped Settled. by the prod keys? Like just my understanding, because I don't I don't do the emulation for modern stuff. I just play it on my Switch. If I'm gonna play a game, a Switch game, I just play it on my Switch because that's the easiest way. Right. But but like the prod keys are the thing like when i if i have a rom yuzu is using the prod keys to decrypt that rom that's what yeah, nintendo is saying am i right about it's that a, a defoiler yeah but like where did you get the the you, the machine to de like that just appeared yuzu didn't generate that for you right i guess they can point to like the place that like you can go over there to get the defoiler and it's just like mm -hmm. remove the link guys just remove the link um but yeah it's it's along those lines and if that part, if like the the part that unwraps stuff is the crux of the situation, which we've already talked about again, that is like that is like such a silly thing to like. Yes, Nintendo wins. Case closed. Straight to jail. <laughs> straight to jail. Right. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I, I do I do yeah. worry about this whole thing though. Like that, who's who's going to be in the room when they're deliberating? Because yeah. that's going to matter. Like I. Just to give you a little bit of background, so you know, I used to be in the Navy, and I was uh, Master Chief in the Navy, and I was I was a linguist. So there's very few linguists in the Navy. There was two thousand of us all together. That's very small when it comes to like full force terms. And so I was the rating lead for a while, like the head guy for the for the two thousand people. And so I worked for a three star admiral, and that three star admiral was a me talk officer. Me talk means uh, like weather guessers is what we call them. So people who do like meteorology and stuff like that. No idea about anything linguist, but we're all within the same kind of framework. And so I had to, about a year into my job there, I said, listen, Admiral, you cannot talk about this stuff without me in the room. Like, you're just not allowed to. I'm like, stop having these meetings, deciding the fate of these 2,000 people without understanding the complexities of all this yeah. stuff. You know, not only is it 2,000 people, but there are dozens of languages within that and all these different communities and all these like missions and all this stuff, right? So... How are we going to expect that a judge on a panel is just listening to this expert testimony that they're one, they're going to understand everything that's going on and then also make a judgment on it, which takes years and years and years of experience. And so I'm, I'm just very worried about this. If it does go to trial or whatever they call it, like to go to the full lawsuit, goes to court, how is it going to actually play out? I don't know. I don't know either, but you know what I do know? I do know that. Um, we have uh, been playing games this week, and we're going to talk about the games that we have been playing this week. But uh, after we talk about those, we might be able to fit in uh, at more ads coming to video games. We might be able to talk mm -hmm. about uh, some Jeez. games being yanked off of the uh, uh, off of the Nintendo Switch uh, for reasons that we'll get to later. But let's talk about the games that we've been playing, uh, and I want to start with one that multiple people have been playing, uh, Rich. I already had a copy Heck of this yes. game because the, 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 the publisher sent it to me, but it was just sitting on my Steam Deck until you went bananas in our Discord channel. Talk <laughs> yeah. about Bellatro, or however the hell you yeah. say it. I say Bellatro. I don't know how you pronounce it, but I All like right. Bellatro. Um, yeah, so this was a bit of a like slow ramp up for me because it was out during Next Fest. The demo was available during Next Fest, and people were going crazy for it in my uh, in the Fanda Deck Discord. Shout out to Mosquito, High Tech, Low Life, right? Like people were talking about this game, and I just hadn't had a chance. To, that's what's great about Next Fest, right? So many demos, so many good games, uh, but they were talking about it so much. I bought it on launch, uh, and. It is amazing. So it is a roguelike deck builder, but unlike other, like unlike say Slate Aspire, you're not like fighting an opponent or something like that. You're basically just trying to, uh, you know, the house always wins. You're trying to become the house. You're trying to stack the deck in your favor, either with literally putting cards in the deck or different power ups. So there's like so many different mechanics. Like um, there is this blind uh, they call it like little blind, big blind, 
I want yeah, to interrupt real quick because you left out an important part. It's you make poker hands. Yes, you make poker hands. Okay, go yes. ahead. And it's all and it all has all of these like poker themes. It's not poker, but it just has these themes, right? Like you make mm -hmm. the hands. Um, they have the blinds, which are different. Um, the boss blinds. So there's three rounds in a. I don't know what you call it, but there's three three rounds before you reach a boss, and then the ante goes up, and then you three more rounds and then another boss. And each of those bosses have these like special uh, qualities where like you, your spade cards can be debuffed, meaning they don't count towards your points and that can be painful. Uh, but the point is when you make these hands, you get chips times a multiplier and you add all these power ups to either build your chips or your multipliers so that you can rack up these huge combos and continue to reach the ante as the ante go up, goes up. So whether it's, you know, it starts out at like 300 chips, but later on you got to reach to like 20,000 and I'm sh well beyond that. I haven't gotten to like, I, I feel like I've hit a wall at about anti five, anti five or six, which is I think like 20,000, 40,000 chips. Yeah. And you get the, the, you get the opportunity. Um, like when you're playing, you have a certain number of hands that you're going to play and a certain mm -hmm. number of times where you can just throw some cards away. So yep. you have more than five cards, because poker you have five cards, but you have more than five cards in your hand. And then what you're trying to do is make, uh, you know, the best hand, the best five card or less poker hand that you can. So you don't always have to put out five cards, but like, let's say I put out two pair. Well, what that's gonna do is that's going to double that's the where the multiplier comes into play. That's going to double how many points I get. So if I make two pairs of, we'll say, queens and jacks, right? So a queen is worth 10, a jack is worth 10. So that would be 40 points for those four cards. But then that gets doubled because I got two, the two pair multiplier. And then on top of that, you have joker cards, which will give you passive buffs. And you got the active cards that you can also use. It's really cool. And if it came out at any other time, I would have been playing it nonstop. But I've probably put about two hours into it so far. I've put about 10, I want to say. i got to take a look. <laughs> but yeah, I've put in a bunch of time. And I, I still can't get past it. So the when you get that, by the way, the two pairs, so like it's it differs, right? So it's you get the, the scenario you mentioned, you get 40 points for those cards but two pair has a base payout that's different from high card and different from single uh, mm -hmm. pair so the two pair is it starts out at like i don't know 20 by two or something so you so those 40 points are in addition to your 20 chips so now you got 60 by times the multiplier of two or four and so in addition to the jokers what was the one I was going to mention? Um, the have you seen the planet cards? That's yeah, I, I think I had I had a planet card, and I, I don't remember. Explain like one because they have yes. different planets, and so they'll have different effects. Yes, so the planet cards level up your payout per hand. So Jupiter levels up your flush payout. So it goes from you know twenty uh, forty oh, okay. by six to sixty by six or something like that, right? Like. And it just continues. So you have to continue to level up your payout. And the hardest part is you can't just rely on one hand because I keep trying to like build a flush mega build. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they throw a, they throw a blind at me. That's like um, it'll be like you have to play. You can't play the same hand twice. So you can't play the flush twice. You have to play flush two pair, single pair. So, yeah, they make it really, really tough. This sounds yeah, like it'd be a really great integration with a mobile game. Like if yeah. they had a, a mobile integration with it, and then you could level up your guy either on PC or that. I see it's on Mac as well. Uh, that would be awesome. You know, that's one of those things where there was a time when I got really into Marvel Snap. And mm. I was like, if I could just also play this on like Steam Deck or something, that would be amazing. And so this seems really prime for uh, some sort of mobile integration. And how much yeah. is it? I don't, I don't remember. It's like 13 20 bucks. 13 bucks? 15. It's yeah. 15. I just looked it up. Yeah. Okay. If, it's if, definitely if worth it. it. What's 15, that? 15. Yeah. I said if you can buy it, which will Okay. Get so <laughs> why don't you talk about that? Because it's, this, oh, is, right. this is so ridiculous. Yeah. So I'll pull up the show notes. But basically, it's been taken down from several stores, uh, several 
it's been taken down from stores in several countries. I want to say Germany is one of them. I don't know if I'm just conflating that with the other Germany thing. Um, but due to basically promoting gambling. Um, so the PlayStack, the developers behind Bellatro, they said, we're aware that Bellatro has been temporarily removed from sale on a number of digital stores in some countries on console platforms, meaning that some new customers will be unable to buy it. Uh, but yeah, it just seems like uh, it's due to, yeah, here it is. He also says, was developed by, oh yeah, so this point, Bellatro was developed by someone who is staunchly anti-gambling and pain, and painstaking care has been taken to ensure that the game does not feature gambling mechanics of any kind. So yeah, it has poker themes and it's addictive, like, you know, Binding of Isaac is addictive or like Civ is addictive, uh, mm -hmm. but there's no actual like gambling mechanics to this point. This is not like that's what's weird to me too is like there's stuff out there like counter-strike 2 and you know fifa that have like real gambling mechanics with mm -hmm. loot boxes and things like that and i don't know how that's affected in these countries but i'm just saying like it feels like it feels very much like the little guy got hurt here for no reason yeah it's almost like you're leveling up but they're using currency as that measure of leveling up and so somehow yeah. people are associating that with being gambling but it's not and yeah i saw the thing where it, it jumped in age rating from three to 18 plus overnight yes. without any warning and that's what caused it to get removed from a bunch of stores it's, it's yep. kind of crap yeah it's, it's, really it's, trash. it's just terrible that they that because that's like saying if like what was it is on uh, um uh, microsoft's um it, the, the the solitaire game on windows right that was yeah, always solitaire. there it's like <laughs> saying that's rated 18 plus because it features cards like <laughs> if i go to a casino i could i can play solitaire for money that is a thing that you absolutely can do playing solitaire is not inherently gambling though you know what i mean yep Seems like yep. the recurring theme for this video is people making decisions when they shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> A thousand percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Russ, you didn't play Bellatro. Instead, you've been playing Final Fantasy VII Remake. You got past the ghost yeah. train. What do you I think, did. man? I'm like, I'm like chapter 15 or 16 now. Uh, so getting very close to the end. Uh, I'm liking it. You know, I haven't... I've. I was worried about getting some sort of spoiler, you know, for the the new one, but I haven't at all. And so that's great. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've been enjoying it a lot more than I did previously. There was a point after the ghost train and the following chapter, there was like, okay, uh, you can now do all those side quests if you'd like, but if you talk to this person, the game's going to progress and you can't go back. And I was like, let me go talk to that person because <laughs> I didn't want to do any of those side quests. You know, they're like, oh, mm -hmm. but you can find the chocobos and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to go find those dudes. Sorry. Yeah. And so I just kind of, I'm barreling through at this point, uh, which is kind of how I play games anyway. So it's nothing surprising, but, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's still, gosh, it's cringy, you know, and, and we talked about like the fan service thing, which I did not realize until last week that fan service meant like basically showing skin. Like, I didn't know that. Like, <laughs> I didn't know that was like an illusion there. But anyway, the thing <laughs> I, that really bothers me beyond the cringiness of that kind of part of like, uh, like, I don't want my wife seeing this. Barrett, Barrett really embarrasses me, you know, just his like voice delivery and just some of those like stereotypes with him. I don't like it. Like it's one of those things where I don't, I don't like that character very much. And so uh, not because it, like he's an unlikable character, but because of the portrayal of him is just kind of, it's, it's off, you know, and I, I just don't like that, but I'm getting through it. You know, everything's a little bit weird and funky in that game. So <laughs> I feel like the guy's doing an impression of Mr. T, which I believe that the original right. Barrett was based on Mr. T. And so I totally right. get why they did it that way. That really doesn't bother me. I will say that I do. I, the thing about, Barrett as a character in the first one, it, not the original 27 years ago one, but the one that you're playing is like, oh, he's just so doofy sometimes. Like somebody will just be having right. a conversation and then he just goes bananas and is like, how can you say that about the planet? And they're like, we were talking about, you know, have you tasted this, these tacos? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Like he just goes flying off the handle every 15 seconds in that game. Which yeah. is weird, but if you read the original text of the one that came out 27 years ago, that's just the way that that character was written. You know what I right. mean? It was, it's just weird. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, I will tell you this. I've been first off. We're, I'm going to talk about rebirth, but I'm not going to do any spoilers 
No story spoilers at all, so nobody has to worry about that. Um, I've been, I, I have to say that I did receive it as a review copy from Square Enix, so thank you for that. Just want to be transparent there. Um, it makes the first one feel like a demo. Like, there's so much more. It really is an open world. Russ, I don't think you'll like it because mm. there is, like, I know you kind of like the corridor and the restrictions and the ability to just say, okay, I know where I got to go next. That's where I'm going to go next. This gives you a million choices. Am I going to go over here and open up this tower? Am I going to go over here and fight a thing so that um, I forget his name can analyze the the monsters and 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 do that am i going to go over here and you know try and tame a chocobo am i like you have so many options of what to do at any moment i feel like if you're so, anybody who ever experiences analysis paralysis you're going to be mm -hmm. hit hard with that it, in this game if you want to mainline it do you like is it clear how to mainline it yeah, it's okay. and the first one did this too. Like you had all the side quests and then you right. have a special tab for story that tells you go yeah. here and then go here and then go here. Um I just I'm just soaking it all in. I am 95% through chapter 2. I've got 10 hours in. And I'm 95% wow. through chapter chapter 2. Like wow. this game is going to take forever, I think. Um but I'm enjoying every second of it. The combat is so much improved over the first one. Uh, you know, in the, in the first one, you could block by holding down the R1 button, and so Cloud would yeah. hold up his sword or whatever. Um, but now, when you block, you can then combine that with pressing one of the face buttons, and it'll basically do like a combo with the other characters. And so, like, if I'm playing as Aerith... I can use the bodyguard ability by hitting block and then circle or something. And then Barrett will jump over and get in front of her right before she's about to take damage. And the cool thing about that is that they both build ATB from that interaction, which means you have to do less switching between the characters. At least that's what it seems like to somebody who's, again, only in Chapter 2. Um, yeah. And then you have this secondary not currency uh thing that you spend in order to do things what do you call that not gill right no not not money like uh resource you have a secondary resource mechanic you have your atb bars but then you have these little pips that you can build up and if cloud say has three pips and tifa has three pips then they can work together to do like a big uh, synergy ability which will do a bunch of damage to the enemy um nice. and it's really nice to use that at a, the exact right moment when you're about to take a bunch of damage because it basically breaks combat and then you get to see like the little animation so you don't take that damage that you were going to um the other thing that i wanted to point out is that the rest of your party it, for combat the rest of your party's there so you're it's not just you and two other people you know, if Barrett and Red 13 are not in your party, they're on the side, off to the side, and they're, like, taking pot shots at the enemy. Mm -hmm. And if things are going bad for you, once per, like, battle, you can call one of them in to help out, which is really, really cool. There's so much variety. There's open... It's totally open world with these towers and combat assignments and summon crystals and... Then the, the mini games are insane. You've got Queen's Blood, which we talked a little bit about last time, having not used it. Now that I've used it, oh man, that game is really good. People need to play Queen's Blood and it needs to be its own game. Um, there's just an, a crazy amount of stuff to do in this game and I can't wait to play it some more. I even broke out my um, my backbone controller and is streaming a little bit to my phone uh, because it's just, it's a fantastic game. Nice. That's awesome. I, I'm still, I still haven't gone back to remake myself, so I got to go back to it and get, get, get there and finished out and get to rebirth. Have I don't they think... uh, made any announcement about when, like, I'm assuming it'll come to PC at some point. Have they said anything about when it will 
or is it just PS5 only for the foreseeable uh, future? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's hard to say for sure. It, like, there's been some thoughts that it'd be like a six month exclusive yeah. on PS5. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is that it's most likely going to come to eggs first, and then it'll mm. be some another length of time before it comes to Steam. So you would have to be okay with buying it on the Epic Game Store first. And then if you play on a Steam Deck, now you have to do all the nonsense in the background to get it to play yep. on a Steam Deck. So right. it's up to, you know, depending on what type of store you want to buy it from, could drastically change when you're actually picking this up. Hmm. Yeah, there'll, there'll be people who will be like, well, the, the first one came to PC three years after the original. It's not going to be that long because Sony's kind of changed how they've been dealing with PC uh, more recently. Um Although I know it's a square game, so I don't know. I, I yeah, it's. I think it's going to come down to like whatever Sony invested into keeping it exclusive for themselves. Yeah. At the same time, Square is also probably coming back to the table and looking at the figures that they showed from looking at egg sales and Steam sales and looking out. I'm sure that they've they renegotiated whatever it was for Rebirth. Yeah. Um, to the point that it, I everyone suspects that it's going to be less uh, time, but whatever it comes out to. It's whatever, because then you figure if it comes out on eggs, they can still work on the PC version. By the time it does come out in Steam, it's the it's the Gotti version that has 42 patches, and it's it's the good one that you want, and it's just <laughs> going to be good to get. So uh, I'm I'm fine with waiting until uh, it comes out on Steam. Um, but having said that, looking at some of the the gifs I see on on Twitter and stuff is been really really cool. Some of the stuff has, that you're talking about, right? Like the combat stuff has just been. Has Sunny Legend already started gifing it? No, this is just uh, some <laughs> other. Um, th this is like from the official stuff that people like chopped up. So there's like one okay. that was with like Barrett. Uh, like you know, there's battling going on, and then they tag team up, and then they do this like cool combat sequence, and nice. it just looks straight out of like an anime. Like it just looks so freaking cool that that is. It looks like night and day, like how Bill was saying. It looks night and day from what Rebirth was like versus what mm -hmm. it is now, and. I personally, I'm fine with not playing remake at all and just going straight into rebirth. Um, yeah, but I'm I was actually going to say that there's a there's a story so far thing, uh, right, like right on the main menu. I would say just skip remake and jump right in with rebirth. Or you know, if you really want to really know what's going on, go watch like Maximilian Dude's uh, story summary for the first yeah, one because this okay. is a completely different game. Hmm. Yeah, I will say for, for remake story wise, there is not a lot happening. You know what I mean? Like it's it's mostly about point A to point B for the entirety of that game. It's like we just need to get to this one part. There's a couple introductions and stuff, but there is not a lot of character development at all in in, in the story at all. So I I can see that jumping into the second one makes a lot of sense because I, I I keep thinking to myself, I'm like I feel like there was more things that happened in Final Fantasy VII, right? Oh yeah. That I wasn't just like dealing with the plate stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's all we've been doing in the first game. So. There's there's a funny thing that me and my buddy always talk about. Uh, my my buddy isn't so much of a JRPG fan. I still have like daydreams of being like a hardcore JRPG fan just because i started out with like the dream team of uh final fantasy 6 and chrono trigger like those are the two that i played like first thing and i'm like man jrpgs are great i'm gonna start playing those and you just play more of them and when i played final fantasy i think F final fantasy 7 probably broke me on jrpgs i played like 40 hours and i was in the overworld and i was like messing around my materia and like materia farming or whatever the hell i was doing and i was just like what am i doing i wasn't even enjoying the game i was just like looking for that same type of like passion that i had when i was playing those older games because chrono trigger as a game i loved the entire thing i love time travel i loved all those elements in, in chrono trigger but after playing a bunch of these games and especially final fantasy 7 it's like it became super reductive to me i'm like is every jrpg game just like a machine or a alien that is just sucking gaia of her life force <laughs> and a motley crew of wrestlers is here to save the day yes. like, like is that what i mean they, look at them they're all like like have crazy stuff they have uh, unique moves they got like it's just like the, my friend is the one that brought this up to me, but it's like there's so many allegories to JRPG combat, to wrestling, uh, like WWF wrestling. Like it's just <laughs> like there's so much stuff, like the entrance of like people and stuff. It's just like all of these things are like, wow, there's a lot. If you like wrestling, you probably really like JRPGs. <laughs> and um, I don't know. That's why I kind of loved – I also played Earthbound uh, then as well. And Earthbound was so just like there was a part of that 
Earthbound, where it just felt, I don't want to say wholesome, but like it was, it felt like you as th- you were going through this like weird, trippy thing, but you were doing it as a group, and, and it was like a, an inner, everything like you were doing was a, mo- a metaphor for something in, in Earthbound. And um, I just really enjoyed playing Earthbound as opposed to like the, you know, sucking the life force out of the planet and stopping that company or whatever it is because that's what it like always boiled down to so final fantasy 7 i think broke me on that and i'm i've lost love for final fantasy 7 or just final fantasy in general um i do feel like there's like that part of me that wants a jrpg i have been playing sea of stars um i've been pecking away at Mm, sea of stars yeah i actually been really enjoying sea of stars for for what it is um so i've been peppering those those should i'll just Sorry for like just. I'm gonna go into the games that I've been playing. I've been playing a bit of Sea of Stars, and uh, <laughs> uh, I've been going through that a bit, and I'm actually enjoying it. I really disliked that they did like a heavy tutorial section uh, for like the first hour. It's just not needed. Just the, all that full hour could have just been condensed into like two minutes, but whatever. Um, that exists and now. I'm on like the finally starting to play the game and starting to like it and the only other game that i've been playing talking about card games is hearthstone uh it's a 10 year anniversary for hearthstone they have an event going on right now so yeah, uh, right before we started recording carrie told me that it had been 10 years and i immediately that's insane. Like, turned to dust turned into dust yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, the i actually have a funny anecdote about that too the so at my previous job there's always like super young people and i said something i was like i'm like the i'm like the reaper from bill and ted's bogus journey and she was just looking at me and there was like another artist dude just laughing. He's like, she has no idea what that is. I was like, oh, all right. You know that part in Saving Private Ryan where he's looking at the gravestone and he turns into an old person and she's mm-hmm. still looking at me? And I'm like, you don't even get that reference? It's like <laughs> when uh, Thanos snapped his fingers and everyone turned to dust. How, how about that analogy? You, you, you following me? He's like, oh, yeah. And they go through like three different. I was like, man, this is super meta. I'm talking about turning to the dust and you didn't understand two of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, Hearthstone is a game that uh, I really enjoy, and they seem like they, when Hearthstone first existed, when it first came out, it was pretty tight uh, for a lot of the things, and it was like just super math, like everything was like yeah. perfectly calibrated, and I feel like they've just thrown that out the window, and now everyone, every like class, just is like uber powerful until another class is uber powerful. And they have like these just really crazy zany things and a ton of randomization that happens. And I guess for what it's worth, I I also enjoy that. But I I find myself playing it and the reward structure of just, you know, the free to play part of it, uh, getting coins and stuff just to keep on getting like being able to buy new packs of whatever expansion comes out and all the other stuff. The event that they have going on right now is like earn special cards, which I guess would suck for people that miss this event because you're not going to have those cards. So they'll have another event or they'll let you buy them. There's going to be, I'm sure there's, there's going to be something, but the, the, where it is right now, there's also a special card at the end. Like if, for instance, um, I don't know if you can every month, they have a card back that you can win. You have to just play, win five games and you earn that card back that you can mm-hmm. use. Um, I've never been able, like when I'm, there's been months that I've missed that I don't no longer have access to those. I maybe haven't looked into trying to buy them, but in any event, there's another uh, coin that you can get, the the coin card that you can get to play if you're the second person that plays. Uh, it's a 10th anniversary coin on there. So I've been just pecking away at that like once a day. And I just like go through the event stuff. And there's some really crazy builds that I have. Like, it's fun. Um, so I've just been peppering away at like different games, I think. Nothing like hardcore. I refuse to pick that game up again because it is incredibly addictive. It's so fun. When's the last? Uh, I what's the last? so many hours into it. What was the last uh, expansion that you stopped playing? I have no idea. It's been so long. It was a oh, very okay. long time ago. Okay. Um, I think it was like right around the time where they started separating the decks, where you could, you would have like a. This they is would like have like a standard and a yeah standard versus like this is the new meta, so right. that because otherwise people would you know they would build up too much stuff and then it would they like. Oh uh, yeah. It would be absolutely insane if they let right. every card that was from. It would just be like, oh, I won this first round. One turn kill, first round you lost. Yeah, it's just like that that Yu Gi Oh thing where the guys like pot of greed, pot of greed, da, 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 you lost. And like, what just happened? What, yeah. Was I playing a game? <laughs> <laughs> was I just sitting here? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um. All right, let's move on and uh, get back to the news. Um, Nintendo 
or not Nintendo, the Pokemon company <laughs> said that they are going to bring out a new game. I don't care even a little about Pokemon games, uh, but the way that they phrased this tweet was very interesting to me. They said, Pokemon Legends ZA, an ambitious new entry into the Pokemon video game series, will launch on Nintendo Switch systems right. in 2025. Wait, wait. I mean, you most most of the time they say we'll launch on Nintendo Switch in 2025, but Nintendo Switch systems seems like. Do you guys think that that's just the way that they happen to say it? Like, well, no. Russ has one, Bill has one, Carrie <laughs> has one, Rich has one. That's Nintendo <laughs> Switch systems. systems. Yeah, or Switch, and Switch Lite. Do you think that they're saying, "Hey, Nintendo's about to announce"? the next Nintendo Switch. And we just want everybody to know that when that announcement happens, yeah, Pokemon's going to be... this. The Pokemon letters, or Pokemon Pizza is going to be on that as well. Pokemon Pizza. If, you know, if anyone was to do it, it feels like it's very in character for the Pokemon company to just randomly leak the Nintendo Switch <laughs> 2 or Super Switch. So, yeah, sure. It, it, it lines up. I You know, there is there is a... I think like the, this lineup of the launch titles for Super Switch is going to be mm -hmm. unreal. I have like this mm -hmm. feeling in my now that we know that Pokemon is definitely coming for Super Switch, which is its own like banger of like people needing yep. a Super Switch. Uh, you know the 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 reality is it's not a conspiracy theory that you know Super Switch was delayed because of the a, a Switch cartridge thing. The reality is it was delayed because they need to stockpile enough of them so that they mm -hmm. don't run out. <laughs> That's and the reality. They got to get the software ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, right. but I mean like just like that one dude. I I know I know he exists. I know he exists. There's no conspiracy theory about this. There's that dude at Nintendo that just is the master statistician. And he's like, we're going to make exactly 72 of these. There will be 73 that need to get sold. And then there will be thousands of thousands of people with FOMO. And then we'll make more. And then we'll sell out of those. And there's that guy. And he's a statistician. He's like, oh, man, we're looking at this lineup. We're going to need we're going to need 20 million of these. We're we, If we don't have that, we're 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 going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Yeah. And they're like, OK, yeah. the master statistician said the number. That's what we have to make. <laughs> And yeah. he's only been wrong once, and that's with Animal Crossing <laughs> Amiibos. So, I mean, this this dude is like, <laughs> like you know, I don't know, batting like 999. He's like outrageous. Yeah. 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 I, I do think their year one lineup, and I've said it here before, Ray, like I think it's going to be intense. Oh. I, I don't see any reason to not have Mario Kart 9 in year one. I don't see any reason that, to, we talked about uh, Metroid Prime 4, which, you know, Metroid not, not a top so, seller. Yeah, yeah, I totally see Metroid Prime 4. Yeah, the next Absolutely. 3D Mario game will be the in the first Mario year. Game. It has to yeah. be. Yeah, F Zero. I, no, not going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, like at this point, if you think of it, if it was like just a crowd pleaser lineup of like games, if you look at Metroid Prime Four, is like its own segment of Nintendo fans, and Pokemon is its own segment. There, it, having F Zero there is going. This is going to like. Like the stars aligning, Jupiter, like you know. That's get, exactly what it feels like, right? Like it's, it's. Mm -hmm. I could, I could totally feel like at this point, if you told me F Zero is happening, I'm like, yeah, it's probably happening. Like there, there's, <laughs> there's like so many like under, not, I don't want to say underperforming games, right? But for Nintendo, not their bangers, right? They're like side right. bangers, <laughs> like, like the other weapon that they have that is just devastating to the industry. It's like, oh, I've ran out of ammo of my primary weapon. Let me just take out my side piece and shoot you with some Metroid <laughs> Prime Four, and like, it's like, like, oh, these are still heavy. Why are you hit me so hard, Nintendo? Um, yeah, there's a there's a hope there. Um, I'm gonna say this: the hope is there for me. Not for me to play these games, but my son is eager to go to a midnight launch for the Super Switch. Because it's likely that this is going to be the last midnight launch ever for anything where you'd be able to line up outside and get something. Um, and I want him to have that experience. And if they can have like a banger lineup of games that he can like stack up as well on that day, I would like that to just be like a nice core memory. Uh, for him because I've had multiple of that'd those, be cool. Like well, as I was growing up, but for this newer generation. What have they, you know, really, what have they really had lately? Like, I don't think it's, it hasn't been like a midnight launch fever type of thing. Yep. Ever since you could start buying games, or ever since you could just start ordering your games, that that yeah, midnight launch mentality kind of vanished because people were like, 
I can just get it delivered to my house. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that's what put... I did with the Switch. I had yeah. I I bought I bought two because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get one, so I bought it at two different um, stores because I wanted to I wanted to make I, I had a podcast about it, and I bought two, and they both showed up. Uh, like one of them showed up day one, and that was the one that I used, and then the other one showed up day two, and I gave that one to my son. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, nice. I forget what it was. I, there was a joke with my friends and I because I got a PS4 uh, Best Buy. Best Buy shipped it to me like early, and FedEx delivered it super fast, so I had it the day before launch. Like it arrived the mm. day before oh, launch, wow. and uh, I got it in time so that I could I could make a video. And my video the day of the launch, I had a video showing that the PS Vita could remote stream. So I was like connected to my T-Mobile phone on a PS Vita at work, and I was streaming Resogun. Uh, over and then Kotaku uh, posted about it and everything else. But it was funny because my friends were talking about it and there was like some Sony exec that was like, you were the first person to own a PS4. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> you're the first person. <laughs> like, Gary got it delivered yesterday. Like, it was like no big thing. Like, yeah, I'm going to try to pre-order from Best Buy more often. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, moving on to GeForce Now, um, which of all of the different streaming services, I think right now GeForce Now is the one that has the best quality. Um, they have a free service where you don't have to even subscribe, and you can use GeForce Now in order to stream basically your Steam library or your Epic Games library. Um, but you got to wait. And uh, now it looks like they're going to be including two minutes of video ads while you wait for your your turn in line um keep in mind if you're on the free tier you generally will be waiting more than two minutes anyway how do you guys feel about the introduction of ads into this uh streaming thing rich entirely predictable <laughs> <laughs> like come on this is what we were talking about right like with subscriptions is that there's no way um, I know that I received some amount of heat for this, but there's no way based on what we've seen that these uh, streaming subscriptions specifically are profitable at the moment and they will become profitable, but how do they become profitable with stuff like this, right? Like you have to raise the prices. You have to, once you, once you have that user acquisition, you have those people locked in, you're going to have to raise the prices. You're going to have to introduce ads like, it's at this point we've seen it happen yep. with the other streaming with the non video game streaming services. So this is entirely predictable and I expect that game pass will do the same thing one day. I suspect so as well. Yeah. 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 So the thing for me is that uh, I don't mind this stuff as long as it eats into the time I'm waiting anyway. Like, so we're waiting 10 minutes to play the rig uh, as, and you get two minutes of ads, then there better only be eight minutes after that. And when it gets to the point where it's actually like cutting into your actual gameplay time, that's when I find an ad to be like, it's beyond that threshold for me. I can't stand it anymore. This but if it's just going to be an ad is playing, brought to you by. <laughs> right. And yeah. so, yeah, there's an integration piece there of like right. when it comes to the point where it's so inconvenient that I no longer like that service. And so as long as it doesn't step into that part, I don't care. I got to wait 10 minutes yeah, anyway. I guess you know so. what I mean? I'm going to click off of it, you know, the, but yeah. if it goes into that other part, that's when I get mad. Is that ESPN type of like victory royale and it like spins into an ad and it's just like right in front of your face. Like, oh, right. I would have right. to sit in a lobby anyway. I guess I'll just, <laughs> I guess I'll just have an ad in my face. But yeah, there's that. There's just multiple things, right? Um, there's been, uh, so I have like AWS stuff from my job stuff that I have in my feed. Some dude was like, he's like, I just deleted a bunch of data off of Amazon S3 and they charged me just to delete it. Uh, he got charged like $430. What? Yeah. Amazon S3 charges for just deleting the data. Like, that's insane. That's the type of like hyper charging scheme that they have going on, on Amazon type of stuff, which is yeah. more or less like a side part of that where everyone like CEOs that want to go into the cloud and use third party services are not aware of all the little nickel and dime stuff that are the t total gotchas. Mm -hmm. But it's along the same line, and we've been ha we've had we, this. I'm sorry, I have to say we had a we had a term for uh, trying to save money by leaving the cloud. It was called Clegxit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so nice. If you're in tech, then yeah, maybe that's funny. The um, the 
we've had this conversation multiple times in this podcast and I've brought it up multiple times just because, uh, you know, you look at it, uh, Xbox Xbone, right? In 2013, TV, 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 you know, like wh- who's mm. having this conversation? Why are you guys talking about TV? And then AT&T buys direct TV, like the whole company is like, what the hell are like, so Microsoft is pushing TV, AT&T bought direct TV. These are two totally different companies doing TV, and then you look at all these other things that you can see it all happening, right? And like Netflix, like gets rid of search and all the other stuff and all these other companies are just starting to like do their own search thing. And now you look at ads happening and Amazon Prime now starts having ads and all these other things. YouTube starts boosting up their ad stuff. And all of these companies that are not the same company, they're all different companies, but yet they're in lockstep with the same type of plan and strategy. So yeah. Amazon Prime, which had nothing with ads ever before, just like we have ads this year. And now we're starting to see GeForce Now have ads. And it's like all of these things that are just streaming video, regardless of whatever that video is, is now starting to have ads so that every it becomes commonplace. It becomes a thing that now you are just expecting if it streams video, I'm going to get an ad. And it's even if they're just different companies, it doesn't matter because, you know, they're going to make money from ads. And if everyone does it in unison, it becomes harder for the dissent to come in. And um, this yeah, episode like of the Nerdness <laughs> podcast is brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> what were you it's saying, almost like we're collectively like the frog that's being boiled yes. at this point mm-hmm. where we are just slowly getting to the experience, making it worse and worse and worse mm-hmm. uh, to the point where we just, like we don't we don't understand that there's an alternative out there and then there'll be some sort of backlash at some point i hope and then it'll kind of go back to whatever it was Can, you know but who knows on the backlash point you guys tell me if i'm crazy because i've been saying this recently with like netflix yeah i am right okay yeah. uh, so forget about basic cable and cable right but like i feel like we're at a bit of a point where like network tv could come back like people right. could, you, right? Okay. The pendulum is swinging back. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it could come back. I feel like if people came up with like, if studios came up with like really good shows and they were they were on network TV right now, like there was there would be a good chance that like we could see that pendulum swing all the way back. You mean where it's interrupted with a commercial? Yes. Yes. And I have absolutely. to watch the commercial and because I can't fast point, forward through the commercial. Well, that's the thing. You have you have to do the commercial anyway, right? You have to do it anyway. Maybe you, maybe we get DVRs back, but you have to do it anyway. And network TV is free. I don't know. I feel the, like yeah, people. We're be- also we're getting nickel and dime too, right? All the different services, and each one's charging whatever. At the, I'm at a point where I'm like, I wish I could just go back to pay a hundred dollars a month for cable and have everything again. Yeah. Because at this point, like, it's like I have to choose: is it going to be Paramount or Peacock? Which one is it going to be this yeah. month? You no. know, and it's ridiculous. Yeah. There's... I say this knowing that it's you know I'm not being ironic because we're all. You know, we all have YouTube channels and we have sure. ads on our you on our YouTube videos, but like the dynamic I is different see there, ads right? when I go places. Like if I happen to be at a location and the TV is on and I see an ad and I'm like, Holy God, I don't know how people put up with that. Because those ads are <laughs> so freaking irritating. And so I always just like I pay for YouTube premium so I don't have ads. You know, I, I yes. When my wife and I sit down and watch Saturday Night Live on Peacock, it's interrupted by ads. But, you know, I reach over and I mute the TV and and we do something else while we're waiting for that ad to be over uh, because you can't fast forward through those ads. Um, I just I I I could not go back to that being the default. Remember changing the channel? When an ad came on. Yeah, and then I forget right. what the hell I was watching on. I never find out what happened to, you know, Doogie Hauser or whatever. That's, no. uh, that's didn't they like uh that collusion that ha- I know it happened with radio channels, at least where I am. Go like if radio has an add on and you go like, Let me go mm. to another channel. It was an ad on another channel. It was like they that's all up. L- lined up their advertisement breaks at the same time. So it didn't matter which channel you're going to to hope to like get into like another song or whatever. You were yeah. just going to be blasted into another ad. So you would like cycle through your tuning stations and then go right back <laughs> to the one that you were at because they were all ads. And it's like I could I was like, I mean, that's genius because, you know, you're not going to be channel surfing like you you would be. But, uh, yeah, that's um, I don't know uh, if. I'm very close, like, you know, a mile away from uh, the Freedom Tower, which has a HD beacon for over-the-air TV. 
I could get high definition over the air with just like a copper coax, just bare, just like just putting it out into the air. Like this. <laughs> I get perfect HD signal. So for me, it makes sense for me to have like broadcast, like at least the, you know, two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen 11, 13 channels. Um, the, at least where my area, those were like the prime channels, the prime, prime time channels. And for those, if those were to come back, they're free as it is right now. But even the services that are on like LG and Samsung and Sony, where they do the free uh, TVs that are streaming in there and those are ad based and stuff. There's mm-hmm. there's some it, there's a lot of content that's out there. And then there's the ones where like Google TV bakes it all in. So it's like it's Peacock and it's all this other stuff, but they kind of blend it all in into this one singular service that it looks like a yeah. direct TV listing or a cable listing of like channels that you're kind of going through and you can see the the time marker of where where it's at right there's there's lots of interesting things there and yeah i I guess everyone when they're first starting to do it they're like everyone hates ads we have to leave ads uh hulu was the only one that didn't do it um but now uh you know hulu always had even if you paid for you always had ads always had ads yeah Yeah, but it's only at the beginning and the end of the show and i don't care that's fine like i turn it on i watch a, a a 30 second ad and then i watch the show uninterrupted and then afterwards, there's another ad that think- does not bother me at all. In fact, the idea of the you know the Fortnite win where you right. said it turns around and says like brought to you by Gillette. I'm like yeah. ah, that'd be funny. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if if you were in the lobby waiting to get into like the pregame lobby for like multiplayer games, right? Like you had a timer that was a 30 second timer before everyone got in to do the thing. At that point, if they were feeding me an ad, would you really care? You're like, okay, I'm just getting blasted in the face with this ad. I wasn't gonna. I was waiting to play anyway. I would be oh, like, I wouldn't be super resistive to that. So there is mechanisms there, like Russ was saying, where I was going to be there anyway. You might as well just pepper it in, make your money, do whatever the hell you're gonna do. Comments are uh, gonna be fire for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to navigate and find a way where this is is fine, right? Like, I. Uh, it's not as good as like what Twitch does. Twitch is like you'll, uh, you know, I've only watched Twitch a few times, but you go to someone's stream and they'll just be talking. Then it's just like hard cut, put an ad in front of your face, and you're like, what? What's going on? Did- Can I go ahead? Yeah, I just want to say like it's not this. This goes back to what you were saying, Bill. Right? Like going to kind of network TV, just having ads anyway. It's not specifically the ad that's the problem, right? Like I don't, I don't like ads either, but it's not the ad that's the problem it's that the deal keeps changing and Mm -hmm. they sold you on the like they specifically game gaming streaming they sold you on it'll be more convenient yes you'll lose your games you'll lose access to your games but it'll be more convenient for you and and then they give you this deal and that's what happened with netflix right like you you had your entire video library because everything you wanted to watch search going away carrie right like the reason search was useful is because 90% of what you searched for on Netflix at the time was available on Netflix. Right. Now you search for something on Netflix, you're not going to find it most likely. Right. So they can't, they, it would not be helpful to them. So like the deal just keeps changing and it's frustrating. At least to me it is. And as bad as a uh, network television got and is right now, the, the deal hadn't changed for like decades. Like the deal yeah. was the same and that felt nice. I've altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it further. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know who threw this in the in the show notes, uh, but I, I'm thinking it might be Kerry because he, he posted in Discord, but, but Kerry never adds anything to the show notes, so me. I don't think that that's true. Okay, it was you. <laughs> but he posted in Discord, Ghosts of Sushi. Uh, yes. Rich, you added this to the show notes. Talk about it, man. Yeah, another another leak. I, I don't know where these leaks, these most recent like PC port leaks are coming from, but Ghost Sushi looks like it may be announced in a couple days. This is the one though that like we've been waiting for. Like it's been on the Nvidia leak or it was on the Nvidia leak years ago mm-hmm. and everything from that leak has essentially came true. It, it has been ported and this is it feels like the last one in that leak, so We've been waiting for this, so hopefully, finally, it will be announced this week. Certainly, I'll pick it up. I don't know about oh, you guys. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 at this point, I'm I'm okay with waiting on every PlayStation game just to come to a PC anyway. And this yeah. is kind of like to come back full circle to our conversation. If we'll get you know we want to be in a 
position where whatever I'm buying today, I'm going to have some reasonable understanding that I'll be able to play it in 20 years, 30 years, whenever the hell I, I'll please. It, it, as long as it's on PC, right? If there's a PC port of it, even if Steam crumbles to the ground and <laughs> someone has a backup of it somewhere, I'd be able to play it on PC because it would be a native PC port. That's yeah. the, the the core structure of the argument, right? So I'll, I'll yes. always buy it there just for uh, preservation sake and being able to play it whenever I want sake. So, um, yeah, uh, Russ, are you going to be picking up Ghost of Tsushima or did you already play it on your PS4? I uh, So this is one I avoided on the PS4 uh, just because it didn't really kind of meet my threshold. But now that I'm done with the Horizon games, like this is like the perfect open world game to like just add to my PC library. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested. It's it's a gorgeous game. Uh, did any of you guys play it in like the samurai mode where it was like it it had a filter on it oh, which yeah. made it look like and sound like an old samurai film? Nope. No, mm -hmm. but I saw I've seen it a video of it. Yeah. Gorgeous, absolutely Amazing. gorgeous game. Uh, all right, before the show, uh, I tweeted out that we were recording and I had said, "Hey, does anybody have questions?" Uh, so if you reply to that, then uh, Awesome, thank you. Uh, we got a question here from NPC Liam. He said, it seems like the whole crew is convenience hardware in terms of uh, emulation and and whatnot. Sorry, let me say that again. In terms of emulation and whatnot. But do any of y'all have the original systems plugged in and ready to go aside from having it in the background like I've got all the stuff behind me, uh, Carrie does, Russ does, like, do we, do, do you, any of you guys actually have your old systems <laughs> if Carrie's reaching for something? Okay, for audio hey. listeners, Carrie just panned <laughs> his camera to the right. And what am I looking at, Carrie? Uh, it's N64 with Super Mario 64. You can kind of see it right down there. Uh, right there. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yep. Super Mario 64 into uh, that CRT that I have over there. Very cool. And uh, when was the last time you played it? Uh, I actually, my, I'm playing with my son. Um, so that's my original Super Mario 64 that I had from 1996. And I play, I have two playthroughs on there where I have 120 stars. I played through it twice just because I love the game so much. And also there was no other N64 game for like a year. <laughs> it's like Pilot <laughs> yeah. Wing 64 and Super Mario 64. Uh -huh. So I just played through it twice. It was amazing. It's still my, my favorite Super Mario 3D game. Uh, and my son is now uh, playing through it. And uh, he's at 64 stars right now. And I've been uh, playing with him. And he's actually really good at the backwards super long jump. He can go up the the stairs that you can't do, like unless you you mm. know get enough stars. He's like he's like that. Check this out, <laughs> and I'm like zoop something like that's so awesome. Uh, yeah, so I have that set up, and um, uh, I only have my N64 set up right now. My N64 is uh, on top of uh, um, a PVM uh, that I have as well. So uh, I have a few different. I have I have a 35 inch Sharp and this PVM. The Sharp I got is new to me but i picked up from someone that was just getting rid of it because you know people get rid of old crts and yeah. uh, i had a sony one it died because a chip inside of it said that it should die uh but if i could just circumvent that it, the machine would technically power on um so i had to get rid of that one because the sony just it was too new it was like a 2006 last of sony factories for making crts and they had just enough technology in there to make like obsolescence chips put in there. And it's like, why would you, why did you guys do that? I know why you guys did it, but why would you do it? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I picked up, I got that chart, but yeah, it's, um, it's important to play on, on CRTs. And I'm thinking of actually the RetroTINK 4K is going on sale like March mm. 6th or 8th or whatever. And I'm heavily considering buying one just so Can that you I remind could... me the price of that. Cause I know it's really expensive, so but I don't remember 700 or $750 um but uh it's <laughs> for the audio listeners you've got to see rich's face go to youtube.com slash nerd nest his reaction was priceless yeah yeah it's just like uh yeah i mean when you look at what the the quality that you can get out of it on like an oled um you it can do bfi you can do uh there's they just released news today of like this uh, enhanced s video mode so people are making this um a db15 so a vga port uh, a VGA port that goes in that on the back side of it is S video in and it will S video already separated the chroma and luminance. Uh, but this, this is going in through the DB 15 that goes through this mode on the retro Ting 4k that makes it look like RG, like it's so good. 
like the quality of it is fantastic. And there's a bunch of machines that I have where I can do S video out. I have a bunch of S video cables, like original S video cables. So I just need this dongle that goes into DB15. And Bob's your uncle. I'm I'm off to the races. I got I got some top tier stuff there. So all the stuff that RetroTink does, and you know, Russ has talked about BFI uh, at length. BFI is not what you know. <clears throat> You know, you go over to your relative's house and they have motion clarity on where they're inserting fake frames into a thing and you can instantly spot it, but they can't for some reason. And it's like, oh, how, how could you watch this? And like, watch what? I'm like, it's it looks terrible. Like, what are you talking about? And then I have to like turn it off and they don't like it because it'll like, there'll be like a judder. And the judder mm-hmm. is there because of the LCD backlight being on all the time and having that like frame persistence, right? So just putting on BFI is making it more film like quality like you know the crt and like all that other stuff so you it you can have that same frame rate and it's so pleasing to the eye it does diminish bright, uh, brightness but it's like it's such a big thing so if you have an oled with a uh, retro uh, retro thing 4k you can do all these things super easy and mimic crt like qualities on an oled so it's it's really i'm not going to be able to have these like a pvm in this 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 this, this crt they're not going to last forever that's no. the reality of it and I'm not going to be able to repair these for, for like, they're just going to go away. I need to, I, there's a part of me that I want to wait on the retro tank 4k because it's like, I want the 4k plus or whatever. And that's what I'm like, kind of like, do I really need it right now? I don't really need it right now, but there is a desire for having a thing that can sit in front of it. that be a nice scaler for a ton of different sources. Like even thinking about like getting an Amiga from Europe, which is like, you know, PAL, a PAL signal can go into that and then mm-hmm. go into my, my OLED. I can't do that here. So it's like this, this magic box that sits between all of these devices and makes beautifulness on the other end on something that I can use. That's yeah. worth $700. Like it's outrageously good. And yes, it's expensive, but it, it, for people that have all this stuff that want to have the original feeling of stuff, it's the, best way to put on modern displays that's all that it comes down to russ do you have any uh systems actually hooked up so the tv behind me not anymore so i used to have all of those so i have nes super nintendo genesis wii u wii uh gamecube ps2 all back there in the, the kind of back uh kind of slots that i have i had a lot of those hooked up but uh it was it was hard because uh, I didn't have enough plugs and, you know, they all have like those big black bricks. Yeah, and so it was yeah. like, I just didn't have enough space to plug them all up. And then all the cables and whatnot uh, just look so bad in my film. And so I, I had a point where I was only hooking one up at a time. So if you watch like my older videos for like, you know, a month, it was all GameCube games on the back. And then on, for another month, it was like PS2 games. And I got rid of all that. Now I just have a mini PC hidden back there that's running Botticera. And so now I can just kind of run it like a screensaver like I'm doing right now. Uh, so I don't have any of them hooked up anymore, but for a while I did, and I wasn't playing them very much because it's not a good location. Like I'd have to what sit in my chair there <laughs> and then stand like, and... play like this, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so we would do that. We would stand and play for a little bit, you know, me and the boys and stuff. But yeah, I don't have this. Is my only CRT, and so I don't really have anything original hooked up anymore. Although the other day I was working on a video, uh, working on getting the GameCube boot logo working uh, on emulation, which is pretty easy. It's, it's a matter of using the BIOS files. Um, but while to, you to kind of illustrate my point, yeah, while you can, uh, so to illustrate my point, I took my CRT, I put it over to my other table and I put the GameCube up and then, cause I wanted to record like pushing the power button and then the sound and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I played for like an hour cause I was like, well, I got this guy hooked up. Let's play some Mario sunshine, <laughs> you know, it's whole caliber two. And so nice. that was awesome. I love playing on CRT. Like the input latency is just so good. Yeah. It feels so natural. I just don't have the setup, you know, for me and my, my kind of location there, to have. There is something to play them. really nice about intros, uh, the intro to consoles, though, isn't it? Like every one of them, like you think about like the PlayStation 1, right? Like the, mm-hmm. you know, you know, like he's like, yeah. oh, yeah, Epic. yeah. It's, mm-hmm. There's that specialness, the, the, the chasing nostalgia type of uh, stuff that is is super sweet. One of the things that I like to do, Russ, uh, you know, it's the older retro handhelds that had like the three and a half millimeter out and you can do the RCAs, the RCA plugs. Yeah. One of the things that I really like to do on that TV is I put a bunch of um, old TV shows on that little mm. handheld and I just plug it in and then I run some like old, like I watch uh, Computer Chronicles. So I put Computer Chronicles on my TV and watching on my TV, it feels appropriate. So it's like, I don't know. It's, awesome. Yeah, it's 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 That's great cool. to do it that way. It's kind of a silly thing because I have like this little tiny battery powered video player that's meant to be playing <laughs> console game, you know, 
emulation and I'm just streaming old video to a CRT. Uh, but I really like it. It's like one thing that I, I, you know, you do need a CRT for it, but it's, it's really nice. For a mm. while there, I was playing or not playing, but I was watching Starcade on Twitch, uh, which was like this old game show where people would like do video game trivia. It's like from the eighties or nineties, or I think it's from the actually, no, not eighties or nineties. It was seventies or eighties when this was on very mm. early eighties. If, if, if it was in the eighties and like they would come on and they would answer questions about video games and then they would like the winner would go and like play an arcade game, whatever the arcade game was that day that paid to be on the show. And they would be like, if they get this score or higher, then you would like win something. And it was, it was really fun. Like they're just streaming on Twitch because <laughs> who cares? Nobody. Right. Like, right. Right. You know, who cares? So I was watching that and it was just, it's fun. I love, I love watching that kind of stuff. Uh, Rich, are you chasing nostalgia by plugging things in or are you uh, oh, yeah. just going to emulate? Yeah, I have a switch plugged in right now. It's super retro. <laughs> <laughs> so no. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. So I have in my garage and I, it shouldn't be in a garage, right? But I have like a couple of old, old, older systems. So PS2, Wii U, um, Dreamcast. And every once in a while I break them out. But honestly, like it's not convenience is a huge factor for yeah. me, but also I don't actually play that much in terms of retro gaming. Like I, I do a lot of like indie modern indies that are styled as retro, mm -hmm. but I don't very much go back to like the NES SNES library. I, I'm yeah, I'm all about the indies pretty much. So mm. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, I have all of my stuff back here. None of it's hooked up. It's, it's all like decoration and I don't, some of it, most of it probably doesn't work. Um, but one thing is I keep this on the shelf and I, I take the batteries out of it because I want it to last as long as possible. But whenever, every once in a while, I will throw the batteries in and this is Donkey Kong two, uh, which is this old, um, game and watch multi-screen handheld. And let me actually start the game. I love it. And uh, basically, Donkey Kong is up at the top, and Donkey Kong Jr. is down at the bottom, and you got to climb all the way up and bring him a key, and then the key falls back down to the bottom, and you got to climb all the way back down to the bottom, Amazing. and then climb all the way back up to the top. You do it four times, you free Donkey Kong, and there's like little things that you got to jump over, and it's, it's, I don't know if they are, if they even have emulators that allow you to they play do. games like they this do, yeah. because this is like it's a watch like the graphics are like little still images and now that i started it i have to take the batteries out otherwise it'll just keep beeping um because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way to shut it off uh which i'm sure would drove my mother crazy when i was a kid um right because it just goes bleep 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 all the time um Russ, do you know if they have like I've never even looked. Do they have like game and watch they emulators? They do. There's a RetroArch core for it, so you can you can play them. They even have like overlays yeah. that'll show the the like the experience and stuff. Yeah, so oh, that's it's awesome. totally a thing. I'm not not every game's on there because I've gotten emails from people and be like, I'm trying to find this one game and watch kid from my like childhood or whatever, and and it's like not there. And so there are certain games that aren't playable, but there's a big. Um, I'm sure that Donkey Kong Two is on there, so the popular ones are usually there. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Uh, but thank you. you know, go ahead. What were you going to say, Russ? I was just going to one thing to mention along those lines is that we're going, my family and I are going to Japan in a couple of weeks for spring break. And so that's one of my goals while I'm there is to do some hunting for uh, like older handhelds. So like things like a wonder swan and stuff yeah. like that. So mm. I'm Good interested one. to come back and like get some of those and then review them like in today's kind of world and see how that is. And if, I've been on the hunt for a while for a Famicom as well. So like the, the, Japanese version of the NES and so I get I have a lot of those cartridges because they're a lot cheaper than our NES games and so I've been building a library so I'm going to do some shopping while I'm there too cool. if you can get your hands on Donkey Kong 2 you should because it's actually okay. really a fun game it is mm -hmm. it is literally it is actually fun and nice. I don't know if that's just my nostalgia because 
When I was a kid, I had this in my back pocket everywhere I went. I loved this thing. <laughs> Got some time um, to kill. So, so cool. Time for some Donkey Kong too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but thank you to NPC Liam for sending in that question. Um, uh, that was that was a fun conversation starter. I want to try and do that kind of thing more often. Uh, before we wrap up the show, Carrie, what's your next video or what have you been working on, man? Uh, Asus sent me their latest laptops, their G14 and their G16, and I've been going through the paces on those. Uh, what's fun is that it has Intel's uh, highest end Meteor Lake on there, and uh, I'm even more disappointed than I thought I would be, which is surprising. So, uh, you know, you have the, the biggest 185H and it's uh it's a really not great and um i don't know if it's just asus's stuff that's on top of there but asus's software on armory crate is actually really good like where it's gone to now that the options that you have to like bifurcate what you want to do and it's very seamless and stuff but honestly and i'm gonna make a video of this separately and it's a hope that like the rog ally 2 is using an OLED screen, but more to the point, the same type of stuff that they went to the lengths of getting the OLED. We talked about this last one with the PWM, uh, the PWM screen uh, on OLED, right? Mm. They went to the lengths of not having that. And it is just, I look at the screen and it, it feels so soft on my eyes. Like, I'm just, it's like pleasant to just, like, just, just just glancing off my face and i'm just like uh, it's i'm making that a gift <laughs> yeah it's it's so good uh so i'm just a big fan of the the lengths that they went to for the oled panels that they have there and the the wish is that they they bring that to an ally too also like the left it, it, there's a bunch there i have to talk about but those are the videos that i'm working on i'm doing the g16 first and then I'm going to do the G14 uh, next. But uh, benchmarks are done finally, going through all of those and doing the battery tests and all the other stuff. They, they're they surprisingly fantastic laptops. Rich, what about you, man? Yeah, so I just put out a video, a news video. I'll, I'll have another deck news video this week. It's been a little crazy at my day job, so content's been a little bit light lately, but I'll get back to it. Very cool. And uh, yeah. Russ, you got any... And you you ordered your MSI Claw, right? That's on its way? I did. Uh, according to Newegg, it's supposed to ship on the 8th, but I don't think it releases till the 12th. So let's, I'll, I'll, I'll see. But the thing is, we're leaving, you know, on like the 16th or 17th. And so I want to try to at least get a first impressions video out before I go to Japan and maybe take it with me uh, on the trip. And so we'll kind of see how that goes. But before then, I got, I'm got i trying to make as many videos as I can so that some will come out while we're gone because we're gone for like 10 days. Um, but one I'm working on right now is, uh, emulation on a fire stick. And so mm -hmm. I did a video about this a couple of years ago, you know, just getting RetroArch running and stuff, but I just know a lot more about emulating on Android nowadays. And so I'm working on that and there's some surprising things, uh, trying to get a front end working and stuff isn't really working out, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a new video on that. I don't know if it'll come out this week or, or what, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, you pay 50 bucks for like the high end fire stick and yeah, it does all the things with higher sticking to do but you could also play all your retro games on it too up to nintendo 64 and dreamcast and some psp as well so it's it's pretty impressive that's, that's very cool let me ask you a question real quick russ do you have an n64 controller that you use when playing n64 games or do you remap a regular controller like that because i always tried remapping a controller and i'm like this isn't it yeah and then i tried using an n64 controller and i'm like this is a hassle <laughs> so that's my like one uh confession is that like i've actually never held a nintendo 64 controller in my life okay when so, you're in uh, japan ever, you yeah. gotta buy one yeah, I might have to. I mean, I, I've i never, like, so that period in my life, I wasn't playing video games at mm. all. Like, when PS1 came out, like, I had a friend who had one, and then I just, like, got into, like, punk rock and girls, and so it was like, I was not doing any of that <laughs> stuff. And so I didn't come back to gaming until the next generation, like, PS2 and GameCube and stuff. Very so cool. I skipped it. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us today here on the Nerd Nest Podcast. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. If you did not already subscribe, uh, over, I think, less than half of the people who watch this show actually subscribe to it. So please do if you haven't. Also, subscribe to The Fox over at YouTube.com slash The Fox. Uh, uh, fan the Deck over at YouTube.com slash Fan the Deck. And, of course, 
Uh, Russ is over there at Retro Game Core, uh, youtube.com slash Retro Game Core. And if you want to get this show, you know, we talked about ads earlier. If you want to get the show without any ads in it, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, there's links in, down below for all of that stuff. And uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.